Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And today I want to talk to you about protein, because if you're doing a keto diet like many of us are, the one thing that scares you the most is being kicked out of ketosis. So is too high a protein, is that a bad thing? And how does that work exactly? So we're going to get into that, because I know, like I said, that's something that scares you a lot. You don't know how to calculate the protein. You don't know how much protein you need. And is too much protein all that bad anyway? Anyway, so we're going to talk about that. Make sure you watch to the very end because I'm going to show you how to calculate your protein to see if you're having just the right amount, if you're exercising, if you're building muscle, if you're not building muscle. So like I said, watch to the end and make sure if you like what we're talking about that you like, you share, you comment and subscribe and make sure you also check off that little bell notification so that you know every time I come on the air. Anyway, let's jump right on in. Number one, what is this all about? Where it really comes down to something we call gluconeogenesis. And that simply means that we make new glucose or we can actually make glucose out of other compounds in our body. And the one that we're concerned with the most, as you know, is protein. So if you're taking in too much protein, is it going to produce too much glucose and are you going to get kicked out of uh, ketosis. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So it turns out that this is an endergonic reaction. And what endergonic simply means is that it actually takes more energy to produce it than it does to actually yield energy. So the way the body works is if you take energy to produce a compound, you better get some kind of yield out of it that's going to be more beneficial or it's not really a good reaction to have. So with the endergonic reaction, it actually takes more energy to produce glucose than you're actually gonna get out of it. So it's really not a good thing. It's not a good net output. If you put money in the stock market and you got out less than you put in, that's not a good thing. So that's what happens. So that gives you an idea just how much the body doesn't wanna to have to do this if it doesn't have to. Well, why do we need to do this? Well, the important thing to understand about gluconeogenesis is that it's a demand-driven process rather than a supply-driven driven process. So your body has to have a demand for it. It doesn't just happen because you have excess protein in your system. So just because you take in more protein than your body needs at that moment doesn't mean it's just going to automatically get converted in fact, into glucose, okay? It's simply demand-driven rather than supply-driven. So your body's not gonna stockpile glucose because you have too much protein in your diet. Really, what happens is if you're gonna sprint, and all of a sudden your body needs that quick burst of energy, you just need fast, rapid energy, that's when your body would kick into gluconeogenesis. Another time is basically because your body wants to help regulate blood sugar levels. Blood sugar levels are critically important, so if your body goes too low, in other words, hypoglycemic, your body will actually start to produce glucose and it produces it once again through different substrates or different compounds, protein being one of them. So this is something that once again is completely the way the body regulates it homeostatically demand driven rather than supply driven. So unless your body needs it, it's not going to necessarily produce it. Now, one thing that's important to note too is that your brain does need some glucose. It doesn't run completely off of ketones. So because of that, you are gonna produce some of it simply because your brain needs it. The other thing too is your mitochondria need it. So your mitochondria, the little powerhouses within your cell that produces the cell energy also needs it. So this is why when your blood sugar drops too low, your body will kick in gluconeogenesis to make more glucose to supply those vital organs and parts of your cell. Now, how much is too much protein? All right, let's jump into this. Well, this is key. Like I said, it's not like your body's just going to produce new glucose because you have too much protein. So how much can we actually take? Well, you could actually eat more than you thought. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to because the important thing to understand is when you're on the ketogenic diet, your, your muscle's very muscle sparing, okay? So it's a very muscle sparing diet. So you don't need quite so much uh, protein, but this is how you calculate it. Now, if you're sedentary, you're going to take your body's lean body mass and multiply it times 0.5. Now, how do you figure out lean body mass? I get that question all the time. Very, very simple. Say your body weight is 170. Okay, you're 170 pounds, you're 12% body fat. Now, how do you calculate that? Well, some people have scales, some people use calipers, and if you just Google body fat calculations or body fat chart, it'll give you pictures, and you just look at the picture and compare and see which one you look closest to. So once you figure that out, you now then know your body fat percentage, all right? So say, for example, I'm 170 pounds, say I'm 12% body fat. When I multiply that out, I'm gonna get 
150 pounds of lean body mass. Once again, by taking my total body mass, subtracting out the fat, and I get a lean body mass, and say it's 150. I take that 150, and if I'm sedentary, I'm gonna multiply the 150 times 0.5. So if you're just average, you're sedentary, it's 0.5. If you multiply it times 0.5, that's 75 grams per day of protein. That's simple. If you're working out, you're trying to build muscle, you need a little bit more. So you're going to double that. You're going to take one and you're going to multiply one times every pound of lean body mass. So once again, if I'm 150 pounds of lean body mass, it's going to be 150 grams of protein. Okay, that's very simple. Now, if you're competing and you're trying to really put on a lot of muscle mass because you're a competitive bodybuilder, you might go even higher, maybe one and a half to two grams per pound of lean body mass. Okay, so that's how you figure out all that out. Now, one of the things I hear a lot when it comes to protein, the fats, the carbs, and everything as far as the ketogenic diet is that it's difficult. Now, I want to touch on this really quickly because and I'm touching on it now in this video because it really stems off of protein and that's how I do my calculations. So here's how it works, very simply. Three simple steps to figure out how much you need of each, protein, fats, and carbs. What I do is this. I basically cut my carbs down below 20 grams. Now, you don't have to go that low. You can go a little higher, you can maybe do 50, but if you really wanna burn fat and get your body into a state of ketosis, because by the way, the number one way that you get yourself into ketosis is fasting, okay? If you fast, within a couple of days, you're gonna be in ketosis because you're gonna go through all your glycogen storage that's in your muscle and in your liver, and your body's gonna to have to turn to fat for fuel, right? So that's the number one way to do it. But if you're not doing that, this is how you do it. You have to lower your carbs low enough so that way your body has to turn to fat for fuel. Once again, like I said, you can start at 50, but if you really wanna get into fat burning quickly, go down to 20, just go right into that. Now, from there, I calculate the protein, so once again, protein in my case might be 150 grams of protein a day. And then from there, you adjust the fats up or down. One of the things I hear a lot of times when people say, is I'm in ketosis, which is a nice number, but yet I'm not losing weight. Well, here's what you do. You're probably still taking in too much fat. Most people think, and myself included for a long time, thought, well, you just keep eating more and more fat. Well, that's not a good idea because once again, your body's gonna be burning dietary fat, not body fat. You wanna burn the body fat. So you also then have to reduce your fat. So if some of you are plateauing with this, reduce your fat consumption so that it goes down and monitor your, your weight with that or monitor how you look or your dress sizes or pant sizes. If you're not burning enough fat, lower your fats, right? So once again, you've got the 20 locked in, you have the protein locked in, now you're looking at the fats. If you're not burning fat, lower your fats and see how you do. If you're stable, and sometimes people tell, they'll say to me, Dr. Nick, I don't wanna burn any more fat. I wanna get on a keto diet because I know it's good for me. It's good for my hormones. It's good for cell membranes. It's good for everything. It's good for mood. But I don't necessarily wanna lose weight. Well, then you adjust your fats up, okay? So very simply, adjust your fats down if you're not losing weight. Adjust your fats up if you are losing too much weight. Okay, that's simple, guys. So I hope this is good information for you. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope I maybe gave you a little bit of, uh, took it away a little, some of the little myths about protein. Once again, I was believing that myself for years, that if I ate too much protein, I would kick myself out of ketosis. Now I know that's not the truth. Protein uh, turning into glucose is basically driven by demand, not driven by supply. So you can have your protein, but understand this, okay? Don't go too crazy with the protein because even though it's not going to kick you out of ketosis, you could still put on weight. That's another thing too, right? You could still put on weight. So don't eat too much protein. Don't sit there like a, a glutton and just eat all kinds of protein. All right? Anyway, like I said, I hope this is great information for you. If it was, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much for supporting our channel. I appreciate it. I love and appreciate you guys. Take care. This is Dr. Nick. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.